I am super excited to talk about the iPhone SE because I always loved this model. All the way since the first Gen SE was this unique combination of flagship specs and classic design. And yes, it is a recycled product in its core, but an impressive one. Imagine my surprise when I found out that the iPhone SE 4 could arrive at the stores in 2024 and will use the chassis of the iPhone 14. Yep, you heard me right. According to Mac rumors, the iPhone SE 4 will use a modified chassis of the iPhone 14. And this is absolutely fantastic. The iPhone 14 has a very modern design with flat sides and it's not that far off the iPhone 15 and its slightly rounded edges. Yet I doubt that any iPhone 14 accessories will fit. Apple doesn't like cross-gen compatibility. However, what makes this leak even better is the fact that before it we were expecting the SE4 to look like 10R. Don't get me wrong, 10R still looks great but definitely not as modern as the iPhone 14. Rounded design may be ergonomic and comfortable but won't really look look all that good. And Apple has stopped selling the 10R over three years ago, so getting all those production lines online is definitely off the table, so the iPhone 14 it is. There are so many people who like the design of the iPhone 14 more than of the 15, and if you're gonna buy the SE, then design isn't the most important thing to you. Let's not forget that the iPhone SE is the cheapest ticket into the whole Apple ecosystem. There are two more things that come with the design that are definitely worth the change. OLED display and Face ID. And don't need to tell you anything about that. The OLED display is going to be a huge change over the existing SE. Let me remind you that the iPhone SE 3 that's sold by Apple right now for $429 has a 4.7 inch LCD display straight from the iPhone 8 that technically stayed the same all the way since the iPhone 6 that came out in 2014. That's almost a decade old screen. So I doubt anyone will be against a bigger display with better brightness, deeper blacks, higher resolution, all the modern gestures. Of course, this new display will not have all those fancy features like always on or pro motion and instead of the dynamic island found in the latest iPhones it will be the good old trusty notch and I'm fine with that because for the price this iPhone will be selling for the notch is more than okay as for that face ID at one point there were rumors that the iPhone SE was gonna get the touch ID in the power button like the iPads and it seemed like a good idea but right now I think that there is no point in redesigning the chassis to fit that touch ID power button and it's easier to just use Face ID as is. And by the way, Face ID has been around since 2017 and I think in those almost seven years the cost of the technology has gone down quite a bit. And I don't need to explain why Face ID is such a great thing to have. If you're using an iPhone with Touch ID, believe me, Face ID is a huge step up both in terms of comfort and security. Now if you want to buy this iPhone you need to be ready to also buy a charging brick. And that's why we should talk a bit about this charging from Alhai, sponsors of this video. Alhai Mac Cube 140 watts. First off, the size of this charger is incredible. Thanks to the GAN technology, it's so small and lightweight that it barely takes up any space in my carry-on bag. It's perfect for traveling or carrying on the go. If you don't know what this GAN is, it's a special type of semiconductor that is more efficient than the one in your typical power brick. The design of this charger is also quite cool and stylish, and this vivid yellow color reminds me of cyberpunk, you know? Equipped with two Type-C ports and one Type-A port, it can charge all my devices at once. It can deliver up to 140 watts of power to my devices from both Type-C ports, which means I can charge my laptop, phone, tablet, and more all at the same time. It also supports a variety of charging protocols, including PD 3.1. Another cool feature of this charger is that it uses the same Pi charging technology for all kinds of devices. This means that it automatically adjusts just the charging current to the optimal level for each device, which helps to prevent overcurrent, over voltage, overheating, and short circuiting. And there is one more cool trick, Alhai's 3.0 technology. It ensures that the charger delivers high power output while maintaining real-time temperature control and fast heat dissipation. This means my devices charge safely and quickly without overheating. 140 watts is no joke, so it's good to know that nothing's gonna happen to my beloved MacBook. And there is also LED indication that shows charging stages, which is quite cool. I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to check it out.
However, it seems like there is gonna be at least some changes to the chassis because there has been a rumor that the SE4 will get the action button, just like the 15 Pro did. There are no reasons for Apple not to do it since they didn't call it Pro button. So at least from the marketing standpoint, there is no reason to hold this feature back. This is a really cool button, fully customizable, capable of many things from simple stuff like launching a camera or starting a voice memo, something more complex like shortcuts. And through these shortcuts, it can basically do anything you need. If you want to know more about it and see how I use my action button, be sure to check out my review of the 15 Pro. To some people, it may seem like a gimmick, but I think it's always better to have a customizable button rather than a mute switch that you set into one position when you unpack the phone and leave as is till the day you sell it. At least that's how I use my mute switch before the 15 Pro. Mine was always set to silent. The same leak about the chassis also sheds light on a couple of important changes. Weight specifically, according to this leak, the SE4 is expected to be slightly lighter than the 14. And the reason is crazy, the camera. If the rumors are correct, the SE4 will still use only one camera module. And I have a strangely positive feeling about this. On the one hand, the SE has always been inferior to more expensive iPhones in terms of camera, all the way since the first gen it had only one camera module. It's always always been a good module, backed up by the latest algorithms, but one module nonetheless. For example, the current iPhone SE 3 uses the 12 megapixel camera sensor taken straight from the iPhone 8, which makes it over six years old. Even the best algorithms will not save such an old sensor, but hold on, Apple has an ace up its sleeve. According to the rumors, Apple will upgrade the sensor to 48 megapixels, greatly improving the quality of photos. We can also expect the same features that the iPhone 15 has, such as 24 4 megapixel photos, 2x digital zoom, automatic portraits, and so on. The only difference between the SE camera and the 15 camera will be in the absence of the ultra wide module. But hey, it's definitely not the module you use very often. I, for example, prefer having a telephoto camera rather than an ultra wide. I feel like if your iPhone doesn't have an ultra wide camera, you can almost always go a little bit further back. But with a telephoto lens, this is rarely possible. Plus, portraits taken on the 2x are much more natural and properly show the face proportions. If we look at concepts, we'll see that one camera looks absolutely great. It's so clean, minimal clutter. Another noticeable change is the Type-C port, which is now a standard for all Apple devices. Maybe not all of them have updated yet, but EU laws demand Apple to make this transition. And since the iPhone SE will be a totally new phone, it would be strange to not design it with Type-C in mind. But don't get your hopes up. This will be a slow port, just like on the iPhone 15. 15, you will still be able to connect external drives and all the other peripherals, but forget about blazing fast data transfer speeds. Yet again, those people who want to buy the SE most likely don't care about all that. So the slightly slower Type-C will not be an issue for them. As for the processor, here we don't have any concrete rumors. The current third gen SE uses the A15 chip from the iPhone 13 and 14. And looking at how Apple picks which processor to use in the iPhone, it becomes quite difficult to predict which processor will the iPhone SE 4 get. But most likely it will be the A16 from the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 15. No way Apple gives a 17 Pro to any iPhone other than Pro iPhones. But even with the A16, you will never get slowdowns or lags. The iPhone 14 Pro is still a very fast iPhone and the iPhone SE 4 will be just as fast. Right now, it looks like the SE 4 is gonna be a wild mix of the iPhone 15, 14, and SE3. But there has recently been a leak that proves how close the SE4 will be to the 14. The SE4 will reuse the existing iPhone 14 battery, at least that's what Mac rumors say. And this makes a lot of sense. Why even bother developing a new battery when you can just use the battery of the phone you're already borrowing the chassis from? Of course, this battery will be identical, but only in terms of its internal structure and size. Apple being Apple will surely change the connector to make the battery from the 14 impossible to directly use for the SE4, but at least we already know what the battery of the iPhone 14 is capable of. 3200 million power is much better than 2000 than the current iPhone SE has, and I think we can confidently say that the iPhone SE4 will be a solid two-day phone. When will it be released? 
Hard to say. The previous iPhone SE models were released in March, April, so I think with SE4, the time frame is gonna be roughly similar. In June, there were rumors of it being unlikely to launch in 2024, but it doesn't make sense for Apple to withhold this phone from people, so let's just hope for 2024. And the price. Here, everything is even more cloudy. Even though the iPhone SE3 uses the body of the iPhone 8, Apple still asks $430 for it. So it's unlikely that with the design of the iPhone 14, new camera and all those additional improvements, the price will remain the same. It's probably gonna go up to around $500 and that would take the iPhone SE really close to the iPhone 14 and 15. So let's just wait and see what Apple has in store for us. I'm super excited about this iPhone and I'm gonna buy it regardless. So if you wanna see my full review when it comes out, be sure to subscribe to the channel and if you are considering an iPhone right now, be sure to watch our comparison of the iPhone 13 Pro, 14 Pro and 15 Pro and see you there.